Chapter 5 Looking Good, Feeling Bad Christina opened her eyes and looked at her watch. It was 6.30 in the morning. She tried to move, but she felt bad. She felt her arm. It was very difficult to move. She closed her eyes again. She couldn't believe it. It was a very important day for her, but she couldn't get out of bed. It was now nearly seven o'clock, and she still couldn't move her arm. Any other day she could stay in bed, but not today. Philippe Modet was arriving in Buenos Aires in less than three hours, and she had to give a talk about the exhibition at the museum. She had to get up. Her arm felt better after a shower, but hurt when she brushed her hair. She went into the small kitchen in her flat and made a large cup of coffee. She didn't usually eat much breakfast, but this morning she felt that she needed some. She found some bread in the cupboard and put some dulce de leche on it. The sweet taste was really good. She walked back into her bedroom. She was trying not to think about the accident, but she couldn't stop. She looked at the clock and saw that it was time to get dressed. She didn't feel good, but she wanted to look good. She tried on a short black skirt. It didn't feel comfortable. She usually wore that skirt to go out with her parents, and it didn't feel right today. She tried on a brown suit and then a green jacket and skirt, but she wasn't happy with them either. At a quarter to eight, she decided on a pair of black trousers and a white shirt. She went back into her small kitchen. Her arm was hurting a lot again. She took some medicine, and then she wrote down a number from the book near the phone. It was her doctor's phone number. Maybe I'll call later about my arm, she said to herself. Then she left her flat and went to find a taxi. On flight AF-602, Philippe Modet got up from his seat and walked down the plane towards the toilets. He didn't feel good. It was difficult to sleep on the long flight. He cleaned his teeth, shaved, and washed. That felt a little better. He went back to his seat and sat down to eat his breakfast. Only about two hours to go. The man next to Philippe wanted to talk. Philippe smiled at him and answered questions about who he was and where he worked. The man was a porteño. He was born in the city of Buenos Aires. He wanted to tell Philippe everything about Buenos Aires. They looked at a map of Buenos Aires while the man talked about his city and its buildings. He told Philippe about the different parts of the city that he must visit. La Boca, with its colorful little street called Caminito, full of color and life. The small metal houses there are blue, green, red, and yellow and the painters work and show their paintings in the street. He talked about San Telmo and its old buildings. In the restaurants and theaters of San Telmo, you can see tango dancers and hear the real music of Buenos Aires. He talked about the Plaza de Mayo and the pink building, La Casa Rosada, where the president of the country works. He talked about the shops and the nightlife. The city never sleeps. You can eat, drink, and dance until the morning. They were arriving in Buenos Aires on the 21st of September, the first day of spring, and Students' Day. On this day, the students in Argentina begin their last part of the school year. Across the country, 
The city centers are full of young people enjoying themselves. They walk around the parks and go to bars and restaurants. Philippe was interested. He was looking forward to seeing Buenos Aires. People called it the Paris of South America, and he was sure that he was going to like it. Roberto and Carlos Bocuzzi were still asleep at seven o'clock that morning. Roberto opened his eyes and remembered where he was. He remembered that Cristina Rinaldi was still alive. He closed his eyes again. He wanted to believe that he and Carlos were free, free to spend their money and live a good life without being afraid. He wanted to believe that Cristina was dead. But he remembered every moment of the evening before in the gym. He was using one of the weights in the weights room. Cristina was there in front of him, ready to lift a heavy weight. She was wearing gray shorts and a white t shirt. She was slim and pretty. He could see her long, dark hair around her head. Her eyes were closed. When she started to lift the weight, he moved nearer to her. When the weight was right above her head, he ran forward and pushed the weight down hard. She opened her eyes and looked at him. She saw the weight falling and moved just in time. The weight hit the floor. Then she shouted, and people from the other room ran to her. Roberto left quickly and quietly. He remembered it all. He knew that she was still alive. He got out of bed and walked into his brother's room. He wanted to talk. They needed a new plan. Chapter 6 Meeting Someone Special Christina got into a taxi at eight o'clock. It was only about thirty-five kilometers to the airport, but she knew there would be a lot of traffic. She sat in the back of the taxi, and she thought about Philippe Modet. What did he look like? She knew his voice well, but she didn't know much else about him. In her bag, she had a large piece of paper with P. Modet written on it. She thought she would need it if the airport was very crowded. She arrived at the airport early, but she saw that the plane was also early. Philippe could be there at any moment. She found a good place to stand, and she held the paper up in her hand. She watched and waited. After a few minutes, a man stopped in front of her and said, Christina, thank you for coming. I'm very happy to meet you. The first thing she saw were two very dark brown eyes smiling at her. Christina smiled at the young Frenchman standing in front of her. She shook the man's hand. How was your flight, Philippe? I'm sure you must be tired. We'll go to the hotel, and you can rest before we go to the museum, she said. No, no, that's not necessary, replied Philippe. I'm fine, and I want to see the museum. Let's go straight there. I'd just like a cup of coffee, and then I'll be ready for work. There was a good coffee shop near the museum. They could get out of the taxi in Plaza Francia, thought Christina, drink some coffee, and then go into the museum. Christina liked Philippe. He seemed the kind of person she could enjoy spending time with. She had the feeling the day was going to be all right. The taxi driver was waiting outside the airport building. The driver smiled at Christina and put Philippe's small suitcase in the back of the taxi. Christina and Philippe got in. The sun was just getting warm as the taxi turned into the Avenida del Libertador. Christina could see Plaza Francia in front of them. She asked the taxi driver to stop. She then paid him 
while Philippe took his bag out of the taxi and found a table outside in the sun. He sat down and put on his sunglasses. He looked at all the young people around. He could see they were students and remembered that it was Students' Day. Christina turned around and looked at the good-looking man waiting for her at the table. She sat down, and the waiter came to take their order. At a quarter past ten, they were sitting with coffee and churros. They talked for some time about their lives and their work and their love of Impressionist paintings. Christina and Philippe spent the day in meetings with the museum director, Leonardo Martinez, and other people who worked at the museum. It didn't open to the public until half-past twelve, so they could have meetings and look around the museum easily. Just before she had to give her talk, Christina ran to the toilets and took some medicine. Her arm was beginning to hurt badly, but she soon forgot about it, and she talked about the exhibition. She felt that Philippe was happy, but she couldn't talk to him very much at lunch. They walked to a restaurant, Campos del Pilar, near the museum, with everybody from the meeting. They chose Argentine beef and watched while it cooked on the fire in the center of the restaurant. Christina was at the opposite end of the table to Philippe. She watched him talking and laughing with everybody. She could see that everybody liked him. She liked him, too. After the afternoon meeting, Philippe and Christina were ready to leave the museum. Christina was really very tired, but she wanted to look after Philippe during his stay in Buenos Aires. How about dinner? she asked. Philippe smiled. I'm really sorry, but I'll have dinner in the hotel tonight, if it's okay. I'm so tired. I think I'll try and get some sleep. Can we go out tomorrow evening? Of course, Christina said. I'll take you to the hotel now. We have a busy day tomorrow. Thanks, Philippe replied. Maybe after tomorrow's meeting, you can show me around your city a little. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Christina took Philippe to his hotel in a taxi. See you tomorrow. I hope you sleep well, she said. She watched him walk through the front doors of the Sheraton Hotel. She wanted to stay and talk to Philippe Modet. She wanted to have dinner with him and find out more about him. She thought he was wonderful. When Christina got home, she couldn't stop thinking about Philippe. She smiled to herself. She listened to her phone messages. There were two from Danielle. He wanted to know how she was feeling, and he wanted to talk to her about the accident. Danielle is a nice man, she thought, and she felt happy. She tried to forget about her arm, but it was hurting badly again. She took some more medicine and sat on her bed. She looked up at the picture of red poppies in Monet's painting on the wall of her bedroom. The picture made her feel strange again. There was something wrong, but she didn't know what it was. She lay in bed for a long time before she fell asleep. There were two other people who couldn't sleep that night, Roberto and Carlos. They were talking. Roberto was angry with himself, but Carlos understood. I couldn't kill her myself, he said. It's easy to talk about killing. It's a different thing to do it. We must make a new plan. A plan that's not so difficult. A plan where we don't have to go too near her ourselves. But I almost did it, Roberto said. He couldn't understand why he hadn't pushed the weight down harder. He had stopped for one second. In that second, Christina had moved away from the falling weight.